Hey, so when we ended last time, we were looking at the um, chart that was showing how far everybody was in the game. So it's really pretty even, except for the ones, the two teams that pulled out, because this is scary stuff. Everybody has solved the Ferris wheel puzzle now, except for New Easton Junior High and Bethany's team, Winston said. New Easton dropped out, Mr. Garvey reminded them, and I'm afraid the girls were kicked out of the park, so I'm not sure what they're going to do. He didn't sound worried at all, of course. There was an awkward silence in response. Uh, uh, yeah, said Belle. Well, they'll figure something out, I'm sure. Winston resumed looking out the window so that Mr. Garvey wouldn't see him smiling. After a minute, Winston asked, Did you show the memo pad to Mr. Denham? I did, said Mr. Garvey. Of course he had, Winston thought. Mr. Garvey wanted to scare his rival team into quitting. The math teacher continued, and they were on the verge of solving the Ferris wheel puzzle, by the way. We're ahead now, but just barely. Did Mr. Dunham have any idea why his name was on the cheater's list? Mr. Garvey shook his head. He saw the cheater for a quick moment right before he ran away. He didn't get a great look, but he swears he's never seen the guy before. He couldn't imagine how the cheater would know his name. Are you concerned that your name is on the list, Winston? Yeah, I guess I am a little. Well, stay close to me, and I'm not going to let anything happen to you. Just because we're not running away like scared rabbits doesn't mean I'm not taking this seriously. How do you think he knows about you? Winston had been wondering that himself. And suddenly he realized there might be a way to figure out the answer. Maybe. He sat up a little straighter in his seat and thought about it. Yes, a really wonderful idea was sprouting in the middle of Winston's brain like a whole flower garden. If he got very lucky, he could find out who the cheater was. Winston, Mr. Garvey said, hello. Mr. Garvey, could I borrow your phone? Hmm. Chapter 10. Don't ask to borrow my phone. Thanks. <laughs> the voice of the on the other end of the phone was gruff and impatient. Who's this? It said, all but accusing Winston of interrupting something important. Winston felt himself losing his nerve. The man he'd called, Ray Marietta. Oh, I lost my son. Was an ex-policeman who'd been an important part of Winston's last treasure hunt. And that's that first book in the series, The um, Puzzling World of Winston Breen. Winston hadn't spoken to him in months, and he'd had the idea that maybe Ray would be happy to hear from him. The idea went right out of his head the moment he heard Ray's voice. Oh, Winston. Oh, sorry. First, uh, Winston said, uh, Ray, hi, it's Winston. Winston Breen. Winston? Ray sounded surprised. What can I do for you? Ray made this friendly question seem very unfriendly, as if he could not imagine what Winston might ask that Ray would be willing to do. Oh, so he probably said, Ha! Huh, what can I do for you? Winston wasn't sure where to begin. His realization was this. The cheater had called him at home the same day they had cracked the code. Who else could have made that strange, suspicious phone call? It had to be the man in the green jacket, or whoever was working with him. That's how the cheater knew Winston would be there. He was willing to bet that the other people on the cheater's list had received similar calls. Can you trace a phone call? Winston asked. There was a startled silence from Ray, followed by loud, raucous laughter. Winston had never heard Ray laugh before. He sounded like a washing machine with too large a load in it. Ho, 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 ho. Winston got the feeling his brilliant plan was going to die right here on its very first step. You want me to do what? Ray said when he could speak again. Why do you need a phone call traced? Winston explained as succinctly as he could that they were playing in a puzzle contest sponsored by Simon's Snack Foods, but someone was running around sabotaging the other teams. And this cheater, whoever it was, had beaten up his friend Jake. Is that the short kid with a big mouth? Ray asked. No, nope, that's Mal, Winston said. 
During the last treasure hunt, Ray had met both of his friends, and he'd found Mal to be more annoying than a cloud of mosquitoes. Yikes. Ray gave a little grunt like he was sorry it had been Mal who'd been smacked. Winston finished his recap of events by talking about the cheater's list and how Winston's name had been on it. Are you saying this guy is specifically after you? Well, it looks that way. Me and a bunch of others. Why don't you call the police? I thought I was. You know what I mean. The police who are actually police. You know I'm retired. That didn't occur to me, Winston said. I just thought of you. Ray grunted again. All right, what do you want? To trace a phone call? I can't do that. Besides, how would that even help you? Well, the cheater called me, or somebody working with the cheater. I want to know who made that phone call. Ray was silent for a moment or two before saying, Well, first of all, you can't trace a phone call without a court order, and I can't get a court order because I'm not working anymore. Second, you can only trace a phone call that's happening at that moment. This phone call happened when? Last week? A few days ago, Winston said with his heart sinking. Yeah, you can't trace that call. So there's nothing you can do? Winston said. Oh, now I didn't say that. This guy, whoever he is, really beat up a kid? Yep. And he gave the last two teams flat tires. Or sorry, he gave at least two teams flat tires. And he sabotaged the Ferris wheel over at Adventureland. We have to find out who it is. There was a silence as Ray thought for a moment. All right, what's your phone number? Well, my home number or the cell phone that I'm using right now? Both. Winston said his home number and then had to ask Mr. Garvey for his cell phone number, which he relayed to Ray. What are you going to do? He asked. Well, said Ray, I know a guy. He might be able to do something and I'll call you back. And before Winston could ask another question, Ray hung up. Is he going to help? Jake asked when Winston closed Mr. Garvey's phone. I think so, he said. How is your old pal Ray, Mal said. Winston thought of that small grunt Ray had made as if he'd asked if Mal had been the one beaten up. Oh, he says hi, Winston said. As they approached the police station, there was some conversation about whether or not the puzzle would be difficult to find. Well, it was not. In fact, it was quite a spectacle and had attracted a crowd. Winston pressed his nose against the car window, trying to comprehend what he was seeing. On the police station's neatly manicured front lawn, a platform had been built with six makeshift jail cell cells, and each one held a prisoner. The prisoners were dressed like they had been brought in from the 1920s era silent movie. They wore old-fashioned convict uniforms with wide black and white horizontal stripes and little black and white caps. The prisoners paced in their small cells, sometimes stopping to grasp the bars and stare out at the gathering audience. At various points around the platform were advertisements for Simon Square potato chips. The onlookers must have been perplexed about the connection between potato chips and this mock outdoor prison. Mr. Garvey popped parked. In his excitement, he went a little too fast and had to slam on the brakes. All the kids lurched. They got out of the car and the weird homemade prison looked very far away. Come on, let's run, Jake said. Wait, 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 Mr. Garvey shouted, and they all stopped abruptly. Winston nearly ran into Jake's back. Then Mr. Garvey said, why am I telling you to wait? Go, run, I'll catch up. So they all ran again. Stay together, Mr. Garvey shouted at them. It was hot out, but it was good to run and great to feel like they were still in the game. Winston looked around for Brendan Root, but didn't see him anywhere. Maybe they had solved the puzzle in the last few minutes. Still, they were definitely catching up. So here's a picture of what they saw. Um, so each of the prisoners had a sign in front of them. They have cheated your neighbors. Stole friends' chickens. Oh no, Oscar needs to watch his chickens. 
counting or counterfeiting, making fake money, lewd behavior, ooh, being very inappropriate, disobeyed traffic signal, not good, and ooh, attempted robbery. Hmm, looks like there are six prisoners. Remember, these are all pretend. They're just acting for the game. You saw a couple of other teams staring at the or stare, staring at the prison from a distance or studying something they had written down. They drew closer to the pretend prison and now Winston saw another element of the puzzle. In front of each cell was a sign supposedly showing what each prisoner had done to earn this humiliation. A photographer stood to their right taking pictures of this crazy scene. A label on his shoulder bag identified him as working for the local newspaper. The photographer called out, Hey, Tommy! The man in the lewd behavior cell looked around, wondering who had called his name. He spotted the photographer, who sang out, I knew they'd catch you one day! He cackled, and Tommy in the cell nodded wearily, like he'd heard this joke several times already. Jake said, So what is this? Winston said, I have no idea. Stole friends' chickens? Mal said. What kind of crime is that? Dimitri Simon chose these crimes for a reason. Winston said, trying to think of some ideas, or even one. Right now, he had nothing. They all thought about it for a few moments. Do they really put you in jail if you disobey a traffic signal? Jake asked. Well, then my sister would be in jail a dozen times by now, Jake replied. She thinks stop signs are just suggestions. Mr. Garvey caught up, panting a bit. He looked around, his face a mix of wonder and bafflement. This is a puzzle, he said. Seems to be, said Mel. The math teacher took another gasp of air. I guess Dimitri Simon, Simon isn't interested in Sudoku. So what is this? We don't know yet. We're just looking at the signs. Hmm, Mr. Garvey nodded. Attempted robbery, counterfeiting. Yes, these look important. How many letters are on each sign? Well, that was a good thought, so they counted. There were 20 letters in the first sign and the second. The third had 14. Winston thought maybe they could apply the alphabet code of one equals A, two is B, three C, but that gave them a word beginning with TTN. Hmm, not very promising. The prisoners continued to pace. They all looked sorry they'd gotten involved in this event. Perhaps they hadn't considered just how long they would be in those little jail cells with nothing to do but walk back and forth. At least real prisoners got a cot to lie down on. These guys didn't even have that. Signs, the signs. They had to be an important part. Did those crimes have something in common? Hmm. Winston couldn't see that they did. There was a shout from his right. Winston looked and saw the team from Lincoln Junior High. Rod Denham, sweating profusely, held a piece of paper. And his three students, <coughs> students stood close around studying it. Intensity radiated off them like sunlight. They had just come up with an idea. As Winston watched, one of the kids nodded excitedly to another, who took the small computer out of his backpack, turned it on and Winston could hear the startup sound. The teammate began pushing buttons and after a moment gave a huge fist bump in the air. The team traded high fives and the kids from Team Lincoln ran off to the next puzzle. Rod Denham followed behind a little bit more slowly. Mr. Denham glanced, o glanced over at Mr. Garvey. That smug smile was back on his face. Hmm. You're ahead of us. You were ahead of us for a moment there, Garvey, he said as he passed. Good for you. <laughs> and then he chuckled as he walked away. Mr. Garvey turned scarlet. He couldn't find any way to respond. He just stood there looking furious. His competition with Mr. Denham was like a virus in his bloodstream. Jake said, he just says those things to throw you off your game. Mal said, it's psychology. He's messing with your brain. He twiddled some fingers through his air as if giving his own brains a stir. Mr. Garvey whirled on them. I know, obviously I know. He took a deep breath as his kids watched. 
He pointed at the prisoners and barked. Would the three of you focus more on the puzzle and less on me, please? I want to hear some ideas. Now! So they turned around and stared some more at the jail. After a while, Mal said, let's move closer. That was something to do anyway, so they bobbed their way through the small crowd of onlookers, shoppers, restaurant goers who had stopped to gaze at the spectacle. Jake said, hey, look at that. They looked at the prisoners. They looked at the signs. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking at, Mel said? The numbers. That's probably important, isn't it? Winston didn't see any numbers, but all of a sudden he did. Each of the uniforms bore a white patch embossed with a black number. The man you, who had supposedly cheated your neighbors, and why your neighbors and not his neighbors, was prisoner number 238. Might be a red herring, Mr. Garvey said. Might just be part of their costumes. So in a mystery, in a really good mystery, there'll be different clues that you find that um, don't have any meaning to the puzzle at all or finding the solution. Those are called red herring clues. Can we write it down anyway? Winston asked. So Mr. Garvey got out his pen and his paper and he made this chart. And that chart is in your booklet. It says it's from page 156. Okay, page 156. Yes, came a cry to their left. They all spun their heads. It was Bethany and her team. They had approached the cells too, and now they were jumping up and down, all four of them, including Miss Norris. After this short celebration, they ran back to the parking lot. Whoa, said Jake. They came closer to the prison just like we did, said Winston. Maybe these prisoner numbers are important after all. Maybe that's the key. And it says to keep reading to see the answer to this puzzle. But until then, I want you to look at those um, squares on from page 156 and see if you can solve it before I tell you.